So over the course of the last year or so, I've been creating paintings for my siblings or their significant other, depending on which one appreciates it more. And I am to my brother, or in this case, my sister-in-law, to create a painting for them. And she requested peacock colors. And I cannot be any more excited. I am going to do a larger canvas, and I just happened to make a special purchase from Arteza, so let me show you how I'm choosing the colors. So I signed up for the Arteza newsletter, and I got, I believe it was a 40% off coupon. So I bought a bunch of stuff that I've been looking at for a while. These are some of their specialty cases. This one is the metallic, and it has all these beautiful colors. And then I got their jewel set, which has these colors. And last, I got their classic element set, which are all these beautiful colors. So, as you know, a peacock has some beautiful colors on it, and I want to use a lot of metallic colors. All right, so here's the colors I chose. I have the metallic leaf green, which I actually used in the dark green and a little bit in the lighter green here. I have pearl electric blue, pearl sea green, metallic, this doesn't actually say what color, but whatever kind of a copper gold color, pearl golden hour, and this is the other color I added to this green to make the lighter color green. Then I have Payne's Gray. Uh, this color right here is mostly Payne's Gray with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And then this color is a, a lot of ultramarine blue and a little bit of Payne's Gray. And then this is just the ultramarine, ultramarine blue from Montmartre. And then my white is Liquitex Basics. And I did do a check on all of these. Something that uh, you'll probably all run into is for some reason the my colors with mica always seem thicker. They always seem thinner than they are, but I have to usually add way more water than I'm thinking. I thought all of these were about the same consistency, and obviously the, the ones that had just the painted water were much more runny than the ones that had the mica. So I added a bunch of water to those, so now they're all the same. But I do check even when I have lots of colors. Now I'm gonna paint the outside of my canvas. So the canvas I'm using is 24 inches by 30 inches and one in, it's a gallery wrap so it's one and a half inches on the side. And so if you go to my website to tools, acrylic paint calculator, put in the length and width and the size and the thickness of paint, in this case I'm using a medium, medium thick paint, you get how much ounces you need to do that pour. In this case, I need about 35 ounces. And so here I have three or four nine ounce cups, which would give me about 30 ounces. And then we'll use a little bit of base and that should work perfect. So we are gonna layer our paints here. We're gonna start with a little bit of white in each. I'm not gonna worry about the drips in between because that will just be the base. And then we're going to go with our main color. And just to show you what the uh, consistency is here, this is mound upon a mound. So this is medium thick paint and all the paints are about the same. Do a little bit of this too. Now we're going to do some white, and we don't want the white to go all the way to the bottom, so we're going to try and have it be really light across the whole thing. That's a little bit too much. If, if you have a really light coat and the paint is very dense, it won't sink near as fast if you do it this way.
strip this one up here. And because I'm doing a straight pour, I want it to be as low as I can get it. Once I've gotten a bunch out, I'm going to rotate a little. And do this one left-handed, so we'll see how this goes. You can tell how thick the paint is just based on how it's coming out of the cup. See, it kind of squiggles back and forth. I like how it makes those little wings. That's the, I want to keep the paint coming out about that same speed. Now, I'm six foot eight, so, and I have a big old wingspan, so I'm just gonna do it from one side. I'll probably have to flip it over just to make sure, but hopefully this all works. So first, I'm just gonna kind of rotate. Get. Paint kind of moving and all these probably going a little bit faster than I should. Don't want it quite going off the edge yet. I just realized I lost one of my feet. Now that I've opened that up a little bit, there is a lot of bubbles in this. I was not expecting that. I shouldn't say that. I was expecting it because I just mixed all the paints up an hour ago. I don't think I mentioned it before, but all these are two parts Craftsmart white glue, one part paint, and then water to consistency, which wasn't very much. It's gonna be interesting since I have to hold it and do that, but we'll see how it goes. You're doing a big painting like this and you only have one hand I, I just the bottom there is just sitting on the ground I think that one's doing pretty good so I think I'm just gonna let it go off on that corner I can come back oh I love the more we're stretching it here, the more we're seeing the coppery and gold colors come out. And as it dries, those are going to really, really start to shine. So again, 
over here by my elbow I just have it on the ground and I'm just lifting the other side so I don't have to carry the weight of the whole thing. It's going to be close whether I get to cover everything or not. This thing weighs a lot. I, one of these days I'm going to have to weigh the whole canvas when it's all painted up. Because it's not light, that's for sure. don't really want this, sorry I didn't want to drip on my painting, to be right in the middle. I do want to kind of want it to be off-centered. Oh my goodness, I am just loving how this turned out. I'm glad I did that stripe in the middle to really give the gold and the coppery color some, some direct love. Although I think it's coming out in a lot of places. You can see the gold and the copper. As it stretched out it started to show. And as this dries, I think you'll get a lot, I'm sorry for the glare there, you'll get a lot of that to show through. You can see little veins of it here. And this is my favorite part over here in between my two glares, but I love how the cells and how the blues form together. Got some beautiful striping here. And this type of acrylic pour painting, I think anyone can do. I did this a year and a half, two years ago, and I show you how to do all of this in this video here.